Now, what we find here is there's a big, big uh, effort to send out a carrier group from the Japanese. They sent out five aircraft carriers. They had five to spare, four battleships and 11 destroyers to Salon. They're trying to do what they tried to do to us at Pearl Harbor, except that they can't hide the fact that they're coming. Everybody knows they're coming. Where they want to score a blow is at uh, Trinco Mali, which is the equivalent of the British Pacific base. If they can hit the British hard enough, they're going to stop up the British naval res uh, resources. And in fact, they do attack, but they're not successful. They only scored one hit on an aging carrier called the Hermes, took it down. So Japan continues to harass out here, but it didn't score the blow they needed to take Salon. And that's going to be a big thing. And we'll show you in a second with the map why this is so important. Remember, these islands down here are very close to, especially down in this region, are very close to Australia. Now, if you get past Sumatra, go on the other side, it's clear sailing right to where? Salon, India. So the, the hope is by the Allies is to keep a Malay barrier, as they call it, a line of defense to try to keep the, Brit the Japanese from penetrating further south. Now, what's going to put a little fly in the ointment as time goes on, the Japanese are going to restructure this map a little bit because they're going to take assets over here in uh, the Netherlands, New Guinea, and they're going to start coming down to Papua New Guinea. Remember, New Guinea is the second largest island in the world. Second largest. People don't realize this because we have that western orientation. It's two, size, two times the size of Alaska. Can you imagine that? An island two times the size of Alaska with only about 80,000 people living at it at this time. Most of them in northern New Guinea, which was the Dutch colony, the, Pop the, uh, the uh, Dutch New Guinea, as opposed to the Papua New Guinea, which is pretty much uncharted Australian territory. Okay, so keep that in mind. So the Japanese, their first operation is to try to move on New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. They call this Operation Mo. Their objective was to drive a wedge between Australia and the United States. Remember that they're trying to supply Australia by doing kind of a, a right hook around these islands, coming into the Fijis and supplying Australia from the east coast of Australia and the northeast section of Australia. Now, if the Japanese are in between there, they're going to be harassing what? The shipping lanes. So the products aren't going to come through, and this is going to put a crimp into our military. Because remember, our military assets at this time, the only staging place we have left in this part of the world is in Australia. And this is where Douglas MacArthur has been, been put up. And he's been given control of the Allied troops by this point, 1942. He's been given control of the Australians, what's left of the Dutch. This is his. To start dealing with. Now, Operation Mo is very successful for the Japanese because they gained Tulaga and Port Moresby, which are in the southern part of New Guinea. Now, this is getting way too close to comfort for the Australians because now you're getting within aircraft striking distance of Australia. And if you get bombers coming over, that's going to mean that you're going to have to defend. So this means that they're going to have to jump into action. Well, where they confront them is at the Battle of Coral Sea, where they put out our Navy assets against the Japanese, and we repulse them from Port Moresby. Now, this gives you a little bit of an idea of where I'm talking. Port Moresby, down here on the south east uh, section of uh, Papua New Guinea and the uh, uh, Tulaga is on the other portion up here a little bit. 
The idea is to try to keep this section from going to the Japanese. If you see the dotted line, the next element of the, ja the Japanese attack is to take the Fiji, New, New, New Caledonia, and the New Hebrides, and then you now have cut off the shipping from Hawaii to Australia. So you see how critical this is to maintain and keep the Japanese bottled up and to eventually start pushing back. Well, we're not in position to push back yet because we have suffered such devastating losses in 19, late in 1941, early 1942, we're now just starting to crank up our shipbuilding operations. Well, to build a battleship, that's not like building a car in Detroit. That's not, you know, eight hours of manpower. You start in the morning and the finished model comes out on the, the assembly line in the evening. It doesn't happen that way. It takes months of time. Plus, you want to build ships that are going to be superior to what the Japanese have. And that's going to be the big thing. Can our technology and our production out-hustle the Japanese? Because up to this point, the Japanese have had the what? The superior tech? They've had better ships, better airplanes. And that's where they keep, uh, keep us bottled up, at least initially in 1942. So if we get better planes, better ships than the Japanese, we can begin to roll back the Japanese game.